But right now, we've got TRK versus Naupo best of seven. Uh, game one kicking off. Well, let me just read out to you guys some of Naupo's um, recent results. Because this guy, he's been on fire. He's been really putting up some great games. Um, obviously, this is TRK's return to 1v1 after an extended hiatus that was fully focused on 3v3. An endeavor that did seem to be worthwhile as Falcons look to be back in their form for the uh, Winter Major. Bit of a difficult run to get Gen G in the 9th to 12th round, but I think they did really well. I was very impressed. I can't wait to see more of them. Yeah, very exciting to see TRK back at, in uh, in the one scene. I mean, he's one of the guys that people were calling to 1v1 Zen when Zen was still in his win streaks. Obviously, he's hitting a bit of a road bump now with Moxie, Daniel, and... Um, I'm blanking on uh, uh, the third player of this tournament for some reason. Moxie, Daniel, and Rowas, of course. How could I forget uh, the initial Zemesis? Ne this is Zem Zemesis? I think I just put Zen and Nemesis together. Um, yeah, those three guys giving Zen a bit of trouble. I'd still love to see the TRK versus Zen matchup, though. I would love to see that um, happen. And hopefully now that TRK is back in ones, we can see that happen. Hopefully with the Gamers 8 qualifiers coming up soon, uh, we'll see that happen. Uh, but yeah, I said I was going to read out to you some of Naipo's recent results. Let me do that before we get deep into game one. He's uh, most recently, I think, 3 0 Evo and 3 0 Chronic um, just last week. Um, he's also got a 3 1 win on Drally this month. And before that, of course, he was dominant, dominant in the um, Saudi Arabia Team 1v1 series. He's completely undefeated in those on my stream. So yeah, as of late, Naipo's been. Very impressive. This is a tough match for TRK in his comeback uh, to 1v1. Now, yeah, like I said uh, at the start of this video, I'm going, or at the start of the stream, I'm going to get back to alerts uh, between games here. I'm a bit behind, uh, but between games, I'll shout you out if you're here. Appreciate all the support. You guys are spamming alerts already. I can't get through them all. Here comes a ceiling challenge for Naipo. Well, you lined that one up perfectly. TRK, rare sighting of TRK in the Octane. Um, Especially these days, everybody seems to be playing the Fennec. Naipo certainly is. TRK's attempted pull shot save, not going to connect. Naipo puts himself one goal up. Yeah, what do you guys think? Is TRK going to switch up to the Fennec at some point um, in this series? I've not been able to watch any of his gameplay since the Winter Major. I'm not sure if he's made any appearances on anyone's live stream. I don't know if he's been playing the Octane just for 1v1, or if this is just, you know, something that he's been doing lately. Yeah, I think Fennec switch up could very much happen. Now, the last time that I, I remember seeing these two play, in fact, the only time off the top of my head that I can remember seeing these two play, um, I believe it was on Fear's channel. It was a, quite a while ago now. If I recall, it was immediately after Naupo 5 nilled um, Evo in a best of seven. You might be thinking, well, Johnny, you've clearly got something wrong there because you just said 5-0 in a best of seven and that doesn't make sense. And you're right to call me out because it doesn't on the face of it make sense. But uh, the, what happened there, um, if you want to know the story, is that he forfeited game four. He, he was 3-0 up in a best of seven and then he forfeited game four, which he was winning, I think, by a ridiculous scoreline late in the game. Um, so then they went to game five um, as a formality and he won that one as well so technically 5-0 in a best of 7 and then TRK straight after that um, came on to play net but oh he might have missed an open net there that was a great mind game by TRK he's taking his uh, time with the goal which does eventually come Naipo misses on his overhead although it's a low one TRK finds a way through uh, but yeah TRK did uh, win that he did uh, he did end up beating now the time that uh, now 5 nil Evo in a best of seven and then straight away played TRK I think game one if I recall I watched that series game one uh, Naipo completely blew TRK out of the water and everybody's thinking oh my goodness Naipo is just unbeatable today and then TRK beat him so you know that's kind of what TRK does he finds a way for me whenever I watch this guy play he's got a very very high floor to his 1v1 gameplay just to his gameplay in general he's super consistent um, you know obviously Falcons have had their problems with their 3v3 um, consistency, but I don't think that was ever down to any of them and their individual consistency. It was mainly, I think, nerves and team consistency. Uh, TRK as an individual player is ridiculously mechanically consistent and just a very, very solid player. Player that when I say a high floor, for those of you who are unfamiliar with the term, is, you know, he doesn't really have too many very bad days. Uh, you know, some players have lower floors, high ceilings, they're very, you know, peak on their good days not great on their bad days which you know 
is actually how I would describe Naipo for a lot of his one's career. More recently, not so much. His floor is rising. Uh, but TRK, very high floor, ridiculous peak as well. That's it, you know, the combination that I think had him um, as the number one guy, the guy to beat um, in the summer of last year when Gamers 8 and a bunch of show matches and one's events were happening. No, everybody wanted to play TRK. You know, this year it's been all about everybody wanted to play Zed. Everybody wanted to play TRK back then because he was kind of the guy to beat. Um, that's a really nice delayed flick there with the traditional technique from TRK. Always about the delay back in the day, wasn't it? Just not immediately flipping when you jump into the ball. You know, back in the old days uh, when flicks were difficult to execute at any orientation. Yeah, one of the main pieces of advice you'd always hear to new players is just delay your flick a little bit. Don't just jump and immediately flip. Just jump and then flip after maybe uh, just a small small delay. Um, TRK, you know, using delays in all kinds of aspects of his game here. Naipo able to <laughs> squeeze in a couple of uh, celebratory wave dashes there, but only after the goal had been scored, TRK looking to come back. Yeah, I think Naipo winning game one here would make sense. It's what happened last time the two played, and it's what, you know, it, historically it would make sense for these two players. TRK, high floor player, but Naipo, if he's on, which he appears to be, will definitely be able to peak above TRK's floor, and then TRK will learn, adapt. He's one of the best adapting to his opponent throughout a series. Just finding weaknesses, finding openings. Just finds ways to make his opponent feel uncomfortable. Probably thought about the demo there, but Naipo jumped over it. Inside the final minute here, TRK controlling the ball. Definitely wanted a piece of Naipo midair in that exchange. Threatening the bump, but TRK just actually reads Naipo's fake and ties the game with no physicality needed. Naipo being a bit greedy here with his boost, he, he might have actually expected to have a reset there because you notice he leaned back quite far on that landing. He didn't land just clean. Um, yeah, he, he was looking for a wave dash recovery. He didn't have one, so TRK Punishing a mistake there from Naipo. Now he's got him completely on the back foot. That four goal comeback from TRK. Already, you know, speaking through to what I told you guys about him adapting and adjusting, but I didn't think it was going to happen this soon. But <laughs> game one, usually, uh, and Naipo gets the lead. He just runs away with it against anyone. Now here comes TRK in the closing seconds. Naipo backs off, gives him the run up. He's on the back wall. TRK slow plays it. And he'll take the boost in the back corner. Naipo in a bit of an awkward spot. TRK launching it, trying to get it out of Naipo's reach. But Naipo is able to catch it and grounds it just before TRK can get there. Naipo plays against Moxie at 11 p.m. UK today. Is that uh, in a tournament or in a in a show match? Oh, this is awkward for TRK. <laughs> Look at him trying to stay safe on the back wall there, which in fact he does. But that was not an easy position for him to be in. Uh, Fear Stream in Naipo vs. Moxie. That will be in 1 hour and uh, 39 minutes time. Uh, for those of you who don't know, 11 p.m. UK. Wait, was it 11 p.m. UK you said or was it 11 p.m. GMT? I actually just forgot it, but yeah, it's not, it, not for at least another hour and a half. So we're going to be all good. Naipo has full control in overtime. TRK with no boost. He is just trying to survive. Naipo had an opening for a bump there, perhaps, but he's just playing the ball, and now he plays with the bump on the back wall, gets it. Man, TRK did well to survive that long in OT, but Naipo is just all over him. He picked a good moment to go for that bump. Notice he's managed to wall dash to catch TRK in the back corner. And, uh, yeah, TRK, despite coming back from four goals down, drops game one in the best of seven. No uh, TRK leaving the lobby, by the way. You know, I thought maybe we'd see a, an early Fennec switch, but TRK probably feeling pretty good about himself after coming back from uh, such a large deficit in this game. You know, he never really had a full control moment in overtime. He didn't have any moment in that OT, really, where he had uh, boost, possession, and some space. Before that, though, he was getting plenty of all three. Sealing double by TRK. Naipo intercepts before TRK could try and add in another uh, rebound off the backboard. You know, TRK definitely has the mechanics to play Octane to world class 1v1 level. I think his mechanics are often underrated because he plays such a mind game heavy um, style in 1v1. 
No pose mechanics, definitely never underrated. He's up by one already again. Starts an air dribble at the edge of his box. And uh, able to 50 it in. Not sure if he even had a reset there. Didn't need it. 1-0 to the underdog. Now I realize there when I call now for the underdog. Not sure if that would be something you guys all agree about, but well, TRK has just always had that pedigree about him. And uh, Naupo is a guy who's had flashes of brilliance, flashes of S tier, um, 1v1 capability. This being one of them, by the way, I think he's currently in one of his all time peaks. Um, yeah, he does struggle with consistency compared to guys like TRK. I talked earlier on about both these guys having incredibly high ceilings. You know, I might even go as far as to say that, you know, in, in an early game, in a series game, one game two, I think Naipo's ceiling is probably higher. Once players have a time to adjust to each other, um, I think TRK might actually have a higher ceiling than Naipo. Not sure if that makes sense, but that's the way I think about it at least. In a best of one, Naipo's peak, you know, he's up there with Zen. You know, in a, in a one game, just let's see who can peak harder yeah I think Naupo Zen um, maybe a Yan would probably have the strongest one game uh, peaks I mean we've seen Yan do that plenty at Gamers 8 and indeed beating TRK at Worlds but yeah in a series that's where I think TRK's peak might be higher but yeah TRK's floor is definitely higher historically most of Naupo's struggles though have actually come against players he's supposed to beat. I think he's one of those players, Naipo, kind of like Daniel. Doesn't always show up against the guys where he's massively favored, but he is locked in right now. And he is actually consistently getting the better of TRK in these exchanges. Lovely first touch there. Predicting the early challenge and uh, not hitting the ball too far away from himself so that he couldn't catch back up to it play it over the early challenge. Naipo's actually missed an open net off a kickoff here, but he's still in control. He's going to lose that control here, though. TRK with a boosted advantage. That's a big, big miss there from uh, from Naipo, but he's made up for it with a snapshot from midfield. Fantastic spot there from Naipo. TRK playing for the boost. Naipo had his eye on him. Notice that TRK wasn't really lining up with the ball there. We do have another big goal lead for Naipo. He's up by four at one point in game one. He could be up by four momentarily in game two as well. Moxie versus Yan is later today as well. When, do you guys know when those guys are playing? Um, oh, what a shot. Oh, well played by Naipo. Look at the placement on this one. TRK giving him a compliment in the quick chat as well. That is a fantastically placed shot. TRK is pre-jumped directly in front of him. Pretty close to the ball as well. Naipo manages to slot it past him off the crossbar and the post. Yeah, I'm trying to spot. I don't see anyone pointing out. Oh, what a pre-flip, man. Naipo's up by five. That's outrageous. He missed the easy open net earlier after winning a kickoff, and now he hits that, the really difficult one. Oh, my word. He is really bringing the heat at the start of these games. Can TRK replicate the game one ending that he had? Need to one-up himself here, because, he, yeah, like I said, he came back from four last game. Now he's down by five. Oh, that's a good flick, though. Well, TRK from very close range, flicking almost vertically to go over the top of Naipo. He's expecting TRK to drop this low. Notice Naipo doesn't jump here. He's thinking the whole time TRK doesn't have a lot of boost. I don't think he's going to commit here. I think he's more likely to go for a low 50, more likely to try and fake me out. So I'm just going to sit in front of him, uh, and TRK actually just flicks it up into the roof of the net. Going for a flick again, TRK. Naipo reads this one. Nice adjustment in defense there by Naipo. Still a long way to go here, but Naipo's in the lead by five again. Wave dash shot goes underneath DRK, who not for the first time today opts to defend um, just from the back wall. Notice there he turned up the back wall at the last second. I'm not sure how I feel about that because, you know, the, really the only thing he's covering there is a, a floor pinch that bounces upwards or maybe at some kind of half volley floor pinch um, baby that just goes upwards you know really a lot more floor pitches are going down into the goal and yeah, any kind of wave dash shot is most likely going low it's very difficult to get an upward shot i think trk probably picked a, a low percentage uh save there definitely would have been a crazy read if he got it right 
Chapo again with that same ceiling challenge earlier. Very comfortable coming in at that angle, it would seem. TRK with a minute and 45 seconds to work with. Spots now plus Rush Challenge. And he will punish it with a counter attack. Four goals for TRK. Still a long way to go in the game. That was all about vision from TRK. Now plus boost dwindled. TRK was on high alert. He knew that there was a chance. Naupo just lunges forward. Why was Naupo banned longer than Zen? Uh, the ban duration wa it was actually the same. It was a one-year ban. Um, but yeah, it started at a different time. For Naupo, the, um, the ban should have started immediately after his offense, which was playing on someone else's account when he was underage. Obviously, those are both things you can't do. And uh, every player has done that. Uh, G2 is Atomic, BDS is Seiko, Zen, and Naipo. They've all been banned for one year, so it's a very consistent ban, actually. Um, but Naipo played one split um, after his offense. Unbeknownst to Psyonix, he'd, he'd committed this offense. It came out later. So uh, since he had played a split that he shouldn't have been able to play, they're now going to take that same split away from him this year. Um, yeah, I think it was Winter Split he committed the offense last year. But now, yeah, Spring Split, he will remain banned uh, for this for the rest of the season. Look at this, guys. Five goal advantage for Naipo. TRK, did he bite off a bit more than he could chew with his comeback match? Naipo in form, not just recently, but even long term, uh, over the past three or four months, he's, he's been ridiculously impressive. I think the, the 1v1 World Cup and the, the team 1v1 matches for Naipo just really gave him all the confidence in the world. Oh, he's faked out TRK in the respawn. Adding insult to injury, 10-4. <laughs> put demo TRK. TRK actually respawns right in front of the ball and after seeing it, kind of panic flipped to the dire general direction and he did not make contact. Yeah, I think this is the Fennec switch up game uh, for TRK. I would like to see it personally. I don't think there's been enough um, of a mechanical edge in the Octane to, to make sense. Naipo's kind of missed another open net there. I'm not sure, <laughs> not sure what's going on with his open net accuracy in this game, but even though I think he's missed two open nets, can't really tell for sure because uh, we didn't have a good angle on that one to see how open it was. Yeah, even just despite that, he's scored 10 on TRK. Now, if you're wondering what I mean when I say mechanical advantage for an Octane player, <laughs> TRK lands a beautiful mind game on Naipo. Obviously too little too late, but well played nonetheless. Um, Octane players, at least in 1v1 recently, tend to be players who are trying to uh, play a high air roll style, very uh, fast paced style. Um, you know, think of players like Dark, uh, think of Daniel whenever he switches Octane. You're not going to see Dandroid unless he's in the Fennec. Um, so yeah, Fennec obviously a lot more solid these days, it would seem. Um, a lot more popular as well, because just, you know, being solid makes sense in the current meta, just not, not just for ones, but for Rocket League in general. Um, and yeah, we do have TRK leaving the lobby, I think, to switch to the Fennec, I would imagine. Definitely to switch decal. Um, because after a crushing loss like that, you've got you to at least change the decal. Uh, this is just a, a known fact. Uh, TRK did write GG, I think. Is that what he wrote? Did I catch that correctly? Right to the end of, the, uh, of that game. Um, probably because there's always someone... Like, listen, I've got to call out some of you guys, some of you YouTube viewers mainly, because, I, it's, you know, it's not entirely your fault, but let me just call out a few of the YouTube uh, viewers. Um, just very quickly as we start off game three here. Now, occasionally, a player will... And this is, this is not something crazy, don't worry. Not, not really all that much drama to look forward to. But occasionally, a player will write GG after a match... Um, in party chat. Sometimes that will be, uh, you know, edited out by the time that a video uh, makes it to YouTube. Um, if the player said GG maybe 20 seconds after the match, that might not, that might not make the final cut. We might just cut the match right as, right as it ends because that's kind of what the YouTube algorithm wants. I know all of you are going to click off to watch something else already, so uh, I don't, and I don't blame you. I do the same. Uh, but yeah, sometimes you guys miss a GG and then you're commenting saying, this guy's salty. I don't like this player because he's he's so bad mannered. He's he only GGs when he wins, never GGs when he loses. Uh, you, you have to you know go either check the VOD or even check Twitter. Sometimes players they they'll write GG to their uh, opponent who just beat them on Twitter. If they don't want a GG in the match, they'll just go and write it uh, on the timeline. Uh, kind of killing two birds with one stone because you can you know say GG uh, respectful. Uh, 
uh, to your opponent who just beat you, and you know, let your fans know that that was the outcome of the match. So, yeah, don't don't jump to conclusions. Is all I'm saying. Uh, I, I I know I, I I see these comments sometimes, and uh, yeah, some of them are misplaced. Most of them are, are misplaced. I would say. Because players uh, in 1v1, they tend to have a lot of respect for each other. And it, you, just because you don't see a GG in a video, doesn't mean there wasn't a GG somewhere. Sometimes they probably DM it to each other. Maybe I don't even see it. Yeah, I, w I, w I would advise you guys not to judge players based on the uh, presence of a GG in a match. Even, I mean, you guys can all relate to it. I'm sure you've all like left a match after a tense ending that you lose in. Maybe your own goal right at the end of a game and you're like, nah, I've had enough, I'm out, and you just leave. But obviously if you're, you know, sitting in a LAN facility, that's a great fake here by TRK, by the way. Um, but yeah, if you're sitting in a LAN facility and playing against somebody right beside you, you might rage quit the match just out of muscle memory more than anything else. You might just leave as soon as you lose. Then you'd probably turn to the guy beside you and say, oh, good game, by the way. You know, like, it, sometimes your immediate reaction is to just leave. Um, and then you say, oh, yeah, but also good game, by the way. Well, that was, you know, good series, good game. Uh, well played. We've all been there. Yeah, it's ERK in the Fennec looking a lot more for the expected Fennec 50-50s. They've become also prevalent recently. That's a big beat though from TRK. Nipo committed hard to that. Did not land well. He's still not back to his goal. Look how slow the recovery was. TRK fakes him at the near post. And Nipo it's made to look a little bit silly here on the desperation recovery that he was making. I mean, he, yeah, from his angle, he thinks TRK has just hit that on target. So um, he has to dive at something. You can't just watch that one uh, bounce off your goal. It's a nice recovery by TRK, but it's not the best touch. He needed to just kill a little bit more time. Let's watch it one more time. He needed to get a little bit more vertical uh, touch on that ball so it doesn't bounce straight back towards the opponent. He obviously landing was great. He was at least into the chance of making it back to it. Nipo putting the pressure on early again. Actually has multiple shots lined up here. Oh, lovely mind game by TRK. Faking the back corner touch instead. Finds an opening to shoot from. You know, TRK is a master of comebacks, but the way that Nopo's played recently, the way he's played today, this feels like a must-win game. He needs to get at least something out of, out of Nopo, give him something to think about. But Nopo's actually handling TRK's um, switch to the Fennec brilliantly here. He's won a couple of big 50-50s that have immediately led to goals. That is definitely troubling. For uh, TRK, right after the switch. Oh, well played by Naipo again. At the very last second, he wraps underneath the ball to scoop it over the challenge. TRK looking to close the gap. I picked the wrong angle. This would really shake up the rankings. I mean, Naipo trying to get involved in the upper, upper echelon now. He's trying to make that jump to S tier. Um, Great shot by TRK there. Naipo giving him a compliment there. You know, these shots are sometimes underrated by the more um, casual Rocket League audience. I think it's it's something you, you gain an appreciation for the more you play the game. Uh, just players that can get maximum power. And just how difficult it is sometimes from certain angles um, to get maximum power on a shot. But the more you play the game, the more you'll gain an appreciation. The more you watch Rock League, the more you're going to gain an appreciation for just a, a simple but powerful shot. Um, oh, what a catch by TRK. Well, that could have been a much more panicky situation, but he handled it very well. He's looking to bait Naipo into a bad challenge here, but Naipo has not made many of those, of any of those today. Both players missing the timing of that boost respawn. TRK got it on the second path. Still great control from Naipo. Still one goal to the good as well. TRK makes one drive by. Makes a second attempt at the demo. Neither connecting. Naipo off the sidewall. Not able to get TRK to commit in an awkward angle. But he has diminished TRK's boost to 12. 
And he correctly identified that with the reverse challenge. Now Pope is all over TRK again. Just one boost pad for TRK to work with. Now Pope's setting up the boost seal. He gets it. And that should be a goal, but it's another miss. Well, the bottom corner looked open. Naupo unable to get it. Now TRK panic flips to the spot. It's open again for Naupo. And this time, he walks it home instead of shooting. Well, it felt like a goal was going to come eventually because TRK just would not let TRK, or rather Naupo would not let TRK stabilize. But it's certainly a panic there from TRK as well. Flipping on the spot when he was in, in a position where he could have done something. It shows that he's really struggling here to contain Naupo's aggression. 40 seconds remaining. Two goal difference. Naupo on the back wall. TRK tries to counter him with a low 50. And Naupo stands strong in the way of it. I don't actually hate that at all by TRK. It's very difficult to get a strong 50 when you're defending off the back wall like that. But Naupo is just too good. He 50s it in defense. And now 50s it in attack. TRK jumping a bit too high. Naupo slides it underneath him. TR King, there's only one true king and his name is Card. No, just, you know, we're in a big world here. There can be multiple kings, I think. Yeah, it would be a, be a shame if there were, there was only one one king, you know. There probably wouldn't be a lot of plot developments if there was only one king, you know. Kings fight for the throne and TRK is trying to get back on his. Nice finish from close range. A well, kickoff goal is needed. Now plus pre-jump. Didn't really do much. TRK doubled from close range. But he needs a kickoff goal and nothing else to keep the comeback alive in game three. And he's not going to get one now, Pope. Too strong, too consistent. TRK had to go for the big win there. Instead, it's a big loss. Score. Another convincing win. It was uh, game one that was the closest. So far, this is really not following the expected path where um, now Pope starts a million miles an hour and then his opponent can start to come back at him. Game one was the only game that cont contained a TRK comeback of some sort. Um, and that, that one he lost in overtime. Since then we've had two um, fairly convincing wins for Naipo. TRK not ready for this new gen of ones? Uh, I would disagree with that. I don't think I would say anything that extreme. I mean... He's, he's playing against a, a Naipo who's, who's rising up the ranks, like I said in the uh, last game. You know, the, the very top tier of 1v1 right now is obviously uh, composed of some combination of Moxie, Zen, Daniel, um, Rawas. Um, I think Yan as well has to be up there. Um, and then, yeah, well, Yan and TRK were a bit more um, unclear because of inactivity, but... Yeah, Yan, Yan's definitely uh, just maybe one win against any of those four names I just mentioned away from being in that um, tier himself. Same with TRK. If TRK or, or Yan, you know, made a comeback to ones and they beat any of the big four uh, that just played in my uh, recent ones tournament, Rawas, Moxie, Zen, and Daniel, that would that would immediately put them at that tier uh, because that's where they left when they, when they last played. <laughs> my word. But it doesn't look like that's going to happen. Uh, TRK goes for... A 1v1 act. I'm really sorry. I just accidentally skipped that replay. I meant to move my mouse and I clicked it. I, I am so sorry. That was a mistake. Um, I'll, sa I'll save the replay for watching later. <laughs> but yeah, TRK is starting with a, so, uh, definitely a top 10 player, but not a top 5 player right now. And he is absolutely getting demolished. So it shows that maybe TRK needs, I think, just a little bit longer to get back to his former shape. Because, um, you know, is he capable? taking on, you know, to, to address the, form, the statement that I started this uh, tangent off with. Uh, can TRK handle the new gen of ones? I think absolutely. Uh, I think he's, he's at that level mechanically when it comes to just Rocket League and 3v3 and yeah, just Rocket League in general. Um, but I think he's just, you know, a little bit off the, the very top tier. So, you know, that's where he was when he was last active, but He's been pretty inactive, so he's just a bit rusty, I think. But when he shakes off the rust, I expect nothing else than, you know, a top five in the world without any shadow of a doubt. Nice little pre-flip and then uh, almost a quarter flip there. I'm not sure if anyone's ever really uh, called that anything other than a half flip, but TRK making it work for him. Gets his opening goal with some beautiful movement off and on the ball. 
you know, if you... It's, it's all about how you cancel the flip. When you have flip, obviously, you're canceling the flip vertically. But if you cancel the flip um, vertically like that after, instead of just 5 o'clock, 7 o'clock half flipping, or back flipping, I should say, if you do it a little bit more to the side, then you're going to land a bit more um, sideways rather than backwards. Yeah, quarter flip. What do you guys think? One in chat if that's a quarter flip, if, it makes if, if that makes sense to you. That's what it looks like. Yeah, Yan recently a couple big wins, uh, but none of the big... He hasn't beaten any of the big four yet. I say yet because he might uh, very soon. But yeah, I reckon he's up there. I've said a few times, I'll say it again, my, my current top 10 in no particular order uh, contains the, the, the four players who recently played in my ones tournament, uh, Rule 1 Beyond Invitational, uh, plus TRK Yan, uh, apparently Jack First Killer, and then for 9 and 10, you can pick any two... I, I, actually, I'm going to put Nipo in there as, as a definite uh, ninth. Um, that, th this, this list is no particular order, by the way. I'm going to put Nipo in there without a shadow of a doubt, actually. And then for... Um, Number 10, I think you've got to go for either AJ or Khaled, probably. Um, and, or maybe even Atto. Atto recently. Uh, actually, I'd, I'd more quickly say Atto than AJ or Khaled, because Khaled's inactive. And uh, yeah, Atto's had big wins recently. AJ's had a couple of notable losses. I'll, I'll go for Atto, top 10. Uh, KV1, not, uh, not enough recently from KV1 uh, to put him into a top 10, I think. Um, he beat Moxie, um, but yeah, he, he lost to, to uh, who did he lose to? He lost to First Killer, didn't he? Did he lose? Didn't he lose to someone else as well? Let me just pull up. It's a great, great little website, RL Jewels, isn't it? Whoa, what a fantastic resource! I've showed it on my stream before, but yeah, RLJewels.gg if you want to see a very comprehensive list of all the top ones players. The okay with the best game he's had since game one right now. He is uh, attempting the the comeback, the impossible comeback. Let's see, he's, he has made two four-goal comebacks in this series. If he hasn't been able to win any of the games, he's made a four-goal comeback in game one, four-goal comeback here, and now he's got a lead in the final two minutes of game four. You can never count TRK out. He's always finding a way to make a series winnable. Yeah, KV1 lost to Zen and First Killer. So, you know, I think First Killer is probably right now at the lower end of my top 10. Uh, probably something like uh, 7, 8, 9, 10 range. Probably like 8, 9, 10 range. Uh, so, you know, KV1 inactivity plus loss to First Killer probably leaves him outside the top 10 right now, I'd say. That's a great pogo shot by... Or it's not a pogo shot, sorry, it's just a normal shot. So, I, I, I looked at my monitor. Immediately the shot came in. I was like, "That's got to be a pogo shot." No, it's just a, just a normal shot. I was just, I was just daydreaming, hoping, hoping that it was something that I can just chuck in a YouTube short <laughs> and have people complain. No, Johnny, it's called a play. It's called a Plan B. I'm like, shut up! It is the Plan B is a dumb name. Uh, it's never going to be called a Plan B by anyone with above room temperature IQ. It's just the way it is. Sorry, not sorry. Oh, it's tough to stop. No, but with so many options. And he chooses one that served him well today. Early reset. Air rolling into the setup to make it look like a flick is coming. And then just shooting with a wave dash underneath TRK. With 111 remaining. It is Naupo. With the setup for a sweep. He fails a wave dash. Actually, <laughs> somewhat lands him in a good position. TRK is very awkwardly placed. Now Pope unable to punish him with an accurate rebound. TRK with a brief little detour to the left wall, or the right wall, I should say, to dodge any potential demos. And then now Pope dodges TRK's actual mid-air demo attempt. TRK not able to dodge that one. Thought that he needed to play the ball to safety. Turns out he needed to get his car to safety. Now Pope takes him out of the frame and makes it a two-goal game. 39 seconds left. Can Naupo really sweep TRK? This would leave TRK in a very tough position. He'd have a lot to prove. He'd have to come back with a vengeance. This would be one of the biggest losses that he's had. And Naupo is handing it to him. What a challenge. And what a goal that is. Naupo pre-jumps TRK. Dunks on him with a flip reset. 
<laughs> then he rebounds. As the ball bounced off the backboard. Well, he actually had to pre-flip into position there. That was beautiful by, <laughs> by Naupo. Fantastic read. Perfect mechanics. And the execution was there. TRK trying to make something happen here late in the game. Six goals to eight. You know, he really wanted a lot more from this series than he's got so far. Like I said, all he's had is two four-goal comebacks in games which appear to be losses. And that is a small mistake there from Naipo. Relinquishes possession late in the game. Can TRK convert quickly enough though? Naipo wasting time, which to TRK is valuable. TRK almost wasting a bit of his own time here, but he does get a goal. And he gets it by slow playing a last second comeback. Yes, that's right, ladies and gentlemen. He slow played a last second comeback. So now with just three seconds left, it is technically winnable. Can TRK get the ball into the air? It's not a bad outcome so far. I think he can get there just, but Naupo plays for the demo and he completes the sweep. What a series. Naupo is absolutely on fire. And he definitely, in my opinion, has uh, risen up the ranks a little bit there. That is a very, very impressive win.